Hello, Trenton, New Jersey. Once again, we're back. Uh, yeah, we're back again. Uh, fourth week in a row. And we're not going anywhere. We're here. We're here to stay until we get some changes made on this medicinal marijuana program here in the state of New Jersey. There's a lot of people not aware of the uh, medical marijuana program here in New Jersey. Um, as a matter of fact, it was an open discussion uh, yesterday in class. Not even a quarter of the class of 200 students were not aware of the medicinal marijuana program. And um, I'm here to tell you that cannabis is medicine. There has been scientific studies that proves that medicinal marijuana can help with over 700 conditions. 700! This isn't just epilepsy, uh, back spasms, cancer. This is over 700 conditions. Uh, if you don't believe me, look it up. Google it. Uh, it, it cures cancer. It kills cancer cells. Uh, everybody here is being deprived. If you have a family member that passed, uh, more than likely medicinal marijuana would have been able to help that family member. Hey, Christy, we're not going nowhere. We're here to stay. We're here to stay. First of all, this is my little girl. Uh, if no one knows her, her name is uh, Tatiana Angelique Rivera. She's an angel, um, AKA Tuffy. Um, this week we're talking about why is it that we have to beg the governor uh, for our children's lives. And that's what it's coming down to. That's what, that's how desperate we're getting. I mean, uh, if you're aware of the news, there's been several children that have died waiting for this program to actually kick off. And uh, it's a shame. No one's child should die because they don't have access to uh, a herbal medication that has been proven to help save lives. She's a beautiful little girl. Her diagnosis is called Lennox Gastros Syndrome. It's a severe form of epilepsy. My daughter's been uh, recorded on EEG to have over 300 seizures within 24 hours. 300. That means my daughter is pretty much comatose. She can't do anything for herself. I do everything for her, everything. Anything and everything that you can imagine, I do for my daughter, everything, okay? Things that people take for granted that their children can do, okay? I do that for my daughter. Her condition, unfortunately, has been noted to not allow them to last more than seven years at times. No, nine years, I'm sorry. Uh, she's seven years old. I waited a year and a half, a year and a half, for my daughter to get the proper medication that she deserves. How fair is that? If her diagnosis has a lifespan of nine years, how fair is it that I'm waiting a year and a half for my daughter to get the medication she deserves. Are you kidding me? Come on guys, open up your eyes. You're all being deprived, every single one of you. If you have a family member that has suffered from dementia and has passed because of dementia, medicinal marijuana could have helped that family member. There's so many different conditions and Lennox Gastro is one of them. One of the least researched epilepsy conditions in the world. It affects less than 5% of the total epilepsy population. Epilepsy claims over 50,000 lives per year. Over 50,000, okay? There's no need for that to be happening. We have a medication that can be grown, not made in a lab with people wearing spacesuits. Spacesuits. Meanwhile, I'm being forced to put this inside my daughter's body, okay? I've gone taking my daughter to get dental restoration surgery because these medications are tearing her teeth apart, okay? Imagine what it's doing to her organs and soft tissues inside. No one can explain that to me though. Jim Miller, we have an awesome speaker that has opened the door for my daughter. You know, him and Cheryl Miller, his wife, uh, they, they help open the door for my daughter to receive the medication she needs. They help save my daughter's life. Right now my daughter is having less than uh, a seizure every five days going from 300, over 300 within 24 hours. I mean, she's living proof that cannabis is medicine and that's what it is. Thank you everybody and everybody have a great day. Oh, Rick, every time I hear you have something to say, it moves me a little bit further. Every time you come out here, you lay it out on the line a little bit more and give us a window into your life. Uh, speaking from the hip like you do. I appreciate you being here. And sometimes I have a lot of things to say. Uh, I try to keep it about the present and what's in front of us. Last week I explained how my late wife Cheryl, although I didn't have any kids, um, 
We changed diapers for 10 years. I had to cut up her food and process it for years. I, I know what it's like to take care of somebody who's taken care of. And so I, I can relate and I, I feel for you all. And I, I try to keep it in check when I'm here and be pragmatic. But I'm getting really pissed off. Really pissed off that we are trying to tell people stuff they already know. Who does not know this? Who does not know what a parent would go through to take care of their child? When that parent says it's marijuana, it's not because they want to get high. It's not to make it legal for everybody. It's because it's what works for their children. Why do we make them beg? Why do we make parents beg? Why do we make children hurt when it's that easy? The governor is not a stupid man. He's smart enough to become governor. He's certainly smart enough to already know this. On the flip side, I like to push back, Jenny. Every Thursday, every Thursday, parents will show up every Thursday. People want to get high, they got the right, and I appreciate that, and I agree with that. And maybe we don't show up every Thursday like parents do. Because maybe it's not our lives at stake exactly, it's our freedoms, and that can be just as important at times. But I just can't hold it in anymore. I, I, I want to offer a back door and say, you need to do this because it's the right thing to do and you know it. But right about now, it seems to be changing around to where it's gonna to be to protect their own butt. That if they don't, it's just gonna look worse and worse. You cannot outlast the parents that love their kids. You cannot compare to them with your commitment to see this not happen. You will lose going up against parents who love their children and are fighting for their lives. Get with it, get with it now, or it's gonna be your ass on the line soon. That is a stone cold fact. Yeah, I'm pissed off. Um, it's easier than being hurt. I'm taking the easy way out when I get pissed off. Because if I don't, I'll cry. And I'm a guy and I don't cry. But I'm uh, afraid if I stand here much longer looking at you all, I might, so I'm, I'm, I'm done. Thanks. Thank you, Jim, for leading the way and starting what you started so that when my son needed cannabis, part of the road was already paved. Unfortunately, we've had a governor that has destroyed part of that road, and that's the difficult part for me. And even though Jim won't cry, I am. Today is really tough. Yesterday, I put my son in the hospital again, and that's where he is today, at Hackensack. Once again, I hope that they don't realize that Jack's taking cannabis and kick him out. Um, the doctors insist that Jack be on a pharmaceutical of some sort, in addition to cannabis, if he's going to be on cannabis. Um, it worked for two weeks. Two weeks, that's all that drug worked. And his seizures started to get worse, so the doctors doubled the dose on the, on the medicine. And his seizures doubled. So yesterday I spent an hour in the doctor's office and I was given three choices of drugs. Triple bromide, FYI, it's a canine drug. That's what they use in veterinary medicine. So I can give my son a dog medicine. Vicopa, a fairly new drug. Um, only been on the market since January. And um, yeah, that causes people to kill themselves. There's been quite a few deaths just since it's been approved since January 1st of this year. And through the trial, I believe 10 people died because they killed themselves, not because of the side effects of the drugs, but because they just couldn't stand being themselves. So those are the options for my son. How do you choose between a dog medicine and something that's going to kill you? So I asked the doctor if he also had another drug that made limbs spontaneously fall off. Because that's a side effect. Can I choose that one? But he had another option. I believe the drug was Sabril. That causes blindness. So there's a side effect out there for everything. And my choices suck. My choices are absolutely horrible. So my son sits in the hospital and the doctors last night increased that drug one more time last night while he was in the hospital. And his seizures tripled last night. Since midnight, Jack's had six seizures. Just since midnight. I left my son sleeping in a hospital bed. And I'm gonna come here every Thursday because change is needed. My son deserves a life. My son deserves to live. 
And if I don't get safe access to the quantity and the amount of medicine he needs, my son will die. He will be the next child to die without proper access to cannabis. And something needs to change. And I will be here every Thursday until this is changed. I will not go away. I will save my son's life or die doing so. Jeannie, we all feel for you and Jack. Our hearts all go out. It's not fair that a young boy has to suffer every single day of his life because the government won't allow him to have a plant that will make him better. A simple edible. Give the kid a cookie and it will help his seizures stop. It's been proven, there's lots of parents that have been talking about it, how it, their children's gone for days. I, I think you said uh, Tuffy went for actually five straight days. Five straight days. And it's because of the, the, the cannabis, the, the medical marijuana. There's no reason for it not to be legal. Uh, the only reason it's not legal is Big Pharma doesn't want it legal. Another reason Big Pharma doesn't want it legal is because they don't get rich curing you. They get rich keeping you sick. They have uh, patents on the plant itself, patents on the cannabinoids, patents on the THC. They know that it has so many medical uses. It cures 700 different diseases or at least helps soothe the pain and suffering from those diseases. I lost my father recently, who died from cancer. Uh, hospice felt it was better to let him suffer and, and die naturally when he could have been taken out of pain with the uh, cannabis oil. And it could have uh, possibly cured his cancer. But even if it didn't cure his cancer, uh, it would have helped him eat and just live a better quality life. Uh, instead, they had him on morphine and oxycotton and all these drugs that just made him hallucinate and didn't even know who we were anymore. So, I mean, he could have taken the, the, the oil and he wouldn't have uh, lost his mind and we wouldn't have lost him prior to his death with him not knowing us because of the drugs they had him on. I am Ken Wolski. I'm Executive Director of the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. The mission of our organization is to educate the public about the benefits of medical marijuana. Marijuana is a safe, effective, and inexpensive therapeutic agent that should be available for any patient who can benefit from it. No patient should ever suffer needlessly, and no patient should ever go to jail for following the advice of a doctor. I'm here to support Jenny and the parents today who are out here looking for marijuana in an appropriate type of marijuana and in an appropriate form that is uh, right for their children to take so that it will stop them from their life-threatening medical conditions that they have. Uh, this really should have been done yesterday. It should have been available to them. This uh, bill was introduced into the New Jersey State Legislature in January of 2005. It spent five years in the New Jersey Legislature. It was passed and signed by uh, Governor John Corzine in January of 2010. And it's been woefully implemented by the Christie administration since January of 2010. Only about 2,000 patients in the entire state of New Jersey have actually gotten access to medical marijuana because the program is so restrictive. And so many patients who thought that they would be qualified and thought that they would be protected by this law continue to suffer needlessly and they're not protected. Marijuana can benefit from benefit actually millions of patients in the state of New Jersey. There are 8 million, almost 9 million people in the state of New Jersey, clearly several million people. One in four people has chronic pain at one time in their life. One in three people has a mental or emotional condition that can benefit from marijuana at some time in their life. And everybody dies, and marijuana is very helpful for the end stage of life. It, it sedates, uh, it, it, it relieves pain without over sedation, it, uh, uh, it raises the spirits of dying people, and it improves the appetite of dying people. And for some it even can improve their problems with incontinence. So it just helps people who are in the end stage of their life in so many different ways that uh, uh, unfortunately so many of these people are uh, not uh, not being able to take advantage of the healing properties of marijuana because of this uh, this program that we have now. But there is a bill in the New Jersey uh, legislature in the assembly right now, A3525, that was introduced by Linda Stender. And this, this bill would really seek to uh, overcome many of the deficiencies of the current medical marijuana program. 
It would eliminate the physician registry, which has been a real bottleneck for the program. It would reduce fees for patients. It would um, expand the qualifying conditions for patients. Uh, it would just uh, it would allow for home cultivation by qualified patients. It would just improve the access and the qualified people and qualified patients in so many different ways that we urge the governor and the legislature to pass a 3525 and to make this a truly uh, comprehensive medical marijuana program. Uh, so thank you all for coming out today and uh, we'll uh, be here on Thursdays to try to convince uh, the legislature and the Christie administration that uh, we, need a we need a comprehensive medical marijuana program uh, that, uh, that benefits all the patients. Hello, my name is Wayne Barini. I qualified and obtained my New Jersey medicinal marijuana program, the NJMMP patient card. Here are some issues, my complaints, if you will, with the NJMMP. Governor Chris Christie has vehemently attacked while destroying the New Jersey Compassionate Medical Marijuana Act. In doing so, violating our basic civil right of safe access to effective medical treatment. There are many problems with the NJMMP. Without further ado, I will discuss my personal complaints. Number one, as an NJMMP patient card holder, all of us, we actually lose our patient doctor confidentiality rights. They're besmirched. But my second complaint, my biggest complaint, the price, the price of medicine. Wow. $500 an ounce plus tax. My third complaint is how the hell does New Jersey tax medicine? How, how, how is that possible? Number four, I mean, I'm no mathematician, but how are there only 300 doctors enrolled in the New Jersey medicinal marijuana program? 300 doctors are enrolled, that's it. In New Jersey, there's 21,000 licensed doctors in New Jersey. I ain't a mathematician, like I said, but 300 doctors registered in the NJMMP out of 21,000, damn, that's less than 2%. Number five, once you find your registered New Jersey medical marijuana program doctor, you must establish a year relationship with them before you can even obtain a card. Number six, we got more. The New Jersey MMP registration fees are $200, $200, and it must be renewed every two years. My number seven, no marijuana edibles. Okay, if people have cancer and they're dying of cancer, and a lot of them have, you know, they don't like smoke, it's common sense. So why wouldn't you just give them edibles? My eighth complaint, alternative treatment centers, AKA ATCs, they are a joke. Only two are up and running in New Jersey. And in number nine, how are there a few next to no doctors who have any knowledge nor education on the benefits of cannabis? For a plant that has a science world buzzing, there really is limited knowledge and education about the medical value of this great plant that our Father God has created for us. Number 10, that, that one thing called cotton mouth. <laughs> Why do you have cotton mouth? Because I'm higher than a mother of oh. Hey, oh, hey. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so we the patients are told that the children will receive the free essential healing oils for seizures and epilepsy and so on. And yet, here are the kids and the children, the adults, both waiting for it. I believe in America, this great country we live in. I believe a large majority of Americans see the medicinal healing value of cannabis. But like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yet the tide is turning, but it needs to turn faster. People are suffering. People are dying, especially here in New Jersey. 
We need to speak up. We need to be that squeaky wheel that squeaks so much it gets the oil. We need to continue to come and meet here at the New Jersey State House. We need to keep voicing our displeasure with Governor Chris Christie's derailment of our medical marijuana program. We need to speak out to our assemblymen, our congressmen, our state senators, legislators, everyone. Everyone who we can voice our anger with our displeasure of the New Jersey medical marijuana program. Speak out where you work. Speak out and let New Jersey know we aren't happy with this failing program. We deserve better. We must be the voice that enables change. Together, my friends, we can do anything. Trust me, if we keep making noise, our message will be heard, and cannabis will one day be looked upon as it should be, a plant with healing and medicinal value. Uh, cannabis is medicine. Uh, my seven-year-old daughter is living proof of that. My seven-year-old daughter is living proof of that. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to listen to me, just Google it. Google it. It takes a second. It don't cost you any money. It takes a second. All you're spending is a second. All right? Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you guys again next Thursday. I'm hoping to see Christy, too, again. Let him know how we feel. It's so She did it. That was amazing that she did 82, 80, 82 hours without 82 a seizure. 82 hours without a seizure. And then she had one today this morning. 5.30 this morning. She had a five minute seizure. Did you have a bad one? Yeah. Really? But 82 hours without one, Yeah. I'll, I'll take that five yeah. minute seizure any day. What's the worst she, she's been? How many seizures in the day? Um, six. Six. Oh. Six. Um, She's had, she's gotten into where she has seizure after seizure, eight, ten, ten. That's been a while though. But normally she has anywhere between three, three, five seizures. So for 82 hours, yeah. you don't know. I was crying all day yesterday. Yeah, no, that's a great thing. We, we actually went to ShopRite, something we haven't done because every time we go to ShopRite, she has a seizure. So I took her to ShopRite yesterday and she checked out the chip aisle up her Doritos because she loves her Doritos. Um, I was tickling her yesterday and for the first time she, <laughs> she laughed and I said, do you want me to stop? I said, tell me no, tell me no. She said, no. Really? Oh. I was crying. Oh. Yep. Right? Well, now we're going to go for 90 hours or 100 right. hours. So we miss Tuffy today. She'll be back. So tell her we said hello. Oh yeah!